It's time for some ministers to resign, says the NNPP presidential candidate, Rabiu Kwonkwoso. And youth candidacy drops 6% ahead of the 2023 elections, says Yaga Africa. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. A president under normal circumstances should surround himself with competent people. These were the words of the presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP. According to him, Nigerians have, put, have to put aside their issue of sentiment and must be careful in the coming 2023 election. Speaking on the state of the nation, the presidential candidate said there are enough resources in the country to take care of everyone, and this is evident in Kanu State. In a one-on-one -on -one session with the NNPP presidential candidate, Senator Rabiu Kwankwaso, we discussed the upcoming elections and the party's level of preparation. Take a listen. Uh, Senator Rabiu Kwankwaso, it's so good to have you join us on the show today. Thank you very much. Um, I have spoken with you before we started the campaigns, and of course I did ask you why anybody would want to be the president of this country, knowing that we have problems on every side. If Nigeria... Uh, were to be a circle and you toss the pen everywhere the pen face would have one problem or the other but it's very incredible when people say they want to run this country but let's talk about the campaign seasons we've seen that um, the pdp had kick kickstarted their campaigns on monday you know you um, were yet to hear from the nnpp but you are in lagos today um inaugurating some campaign offices let's start from there thank you very much um let me start by thanking Almighty God uh, for making it possible for us to be here in Lagos today. And um, it is also an opportunity for me to thank all our members, members of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, who right from the airport were there early in the morning to receive me and members of my entourage who were taken to the venue, to the office. And uh, we were pleasantly surprised to see thousands and thousands, some people are saying good fraction of a million people in that venue. And um, we thank Almighty God, uh, the office has been officially opened. And uh, I had some meetings with some stakeholders, and uh, the meeting will continue through the night uh, to look at the situation in Lagos and even in the Southwest uh, in general. Uh, I'm happy to say that uh, our strategy is working. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we have succeeded in showing a lot of presence in all the northern states. Uh, we have gone very deep and wide in northern states as uh, expected. And now we are now coming into the south. Uh, so far in the north, we were able to open our offices uh, in all the states except uh, Zamfara, um, Yobe, uh, and of course, Jigawa, these are states that uh, are around uh, Kano itself. And very soon, we will go and uh, open the offices and ensure that all offices are towards local governments and states are uh, there intact. Might I ask why, why the three states are yet to be opened since they actually surround Kano? No, you see, normally we go with the circumstances uh, in the states. Some of the states were able to get the offices on time uh, from the wards up to the state level. Uh, some states are working on it. And therefore, we always agree with the state on the issue of date of visiting those uh, states. But in any case, there will always be number one 
and there will be number last if you like uh, in when you start uh, this uh, uh, campaign now the issue of uh, candidates starting the uh, campaign you see many people don't even understand politics politics is not a one day affair you just don't wake up just overnight and say you are a politician or you are starting a campaign. Our campaign has been on at least in the last 30 years. 30 years ago, I was Deputy Speaker, House of Representatives. I was in the Consular Conference from 1994 to 1995. I was Governor of Kano, 1999, 2003, Minister of Defense for the second term of uh, Chief Olishigo And of course, uh, I was. Uh, uh, Senator of the Federal Republic. I was in the NDDC uh, representing the Northwest. And uh, I was also advisor to President on Darfur and Somalia uh, when they had uh, those uh, uh, issues. So our campaign is continuous. Uh, we may decide to receive uh, my flag and that of my running mate. Uh, we're going to be a colorful uh, ceremony. But campaign for us is day in, day out. And uh, that's why, by the grace of God, we are able to establish a huge, huge goodwill across the country. And many people, if you ask them, even the critics, they will say, oh, he's Kano. Others will say, oh, he's Northwest. Others will say, oh, he's North. But whatever the case, you can see the uh, pattern of the support. Uh, when you say Kano, Kano, uh, people say it just casually. It's a huge place. But that's just one state out of the 36 states of the Federation. And of course, you know that Nigeria, more than ever, is very yes, divided, yes. especially for this election. So yes. I think I should ask you, how do we tend to blur those lines? Because it looks more like to the out onlooker that this election is more of a regional election. We've seen candidates representing regions as opposed to representing Nigeria? I am not representing region. I am representing Nigeria. And that is why you can see wherever we go, you may think that is where our strength is. Uh, we had been to some states in the south. We were in Cross River. We were in Delta. We were in Akwaibo. We were here and uh, in fact we are now in Lagos. And uh, many other states, especially uh, Oyo states, I was there a couple of times since uh, joining the NNPP. And all other states, if we go there, you may think that is the home of uh, uh, NNPP. And that's how it should be. Uh, so we thank Nigerians for the support. Uh, of course, they were not doing it just for nothing. Uh, our support is solid, uh, it's organic, in the sense that uh, it's based on our antecedents, it's based on our performance, not uh, interviews or telling lies or using social media or even conventional media. We make very little noise mm -hmm. about what we have done. Uh, in fact, we very much rely on the very old Lucas you mentioned. They are the ones selling us across the country. And uh, sometimes we feel very happy by people underrating uh, our party or the candidates. Or so. well, we're just moving. And uh, I think as we are moving, fortunately or unfortunately, they are beginning to recognize that the NNPP, for many obvious reasons, is a party to beat. Because we in our group believe that uh, the three other parties that people talk about have reached their climax. They have reached their peak. Awesome. There is nothing, nothing PDP or APC or any other party will do between now and February to change its fortune. Nothing. Yeah. It is, yes, it is the NNPP that is a growing party. All those people uh, and goodwill that other parties are losing are certainly coming to NNPP. That's why it's the fastest growing party. Others have reached the, uh, the, their peak. And uh, uh, we are happy that they did, 
because we have their history, uh, we were in those parties, and uh, it was because of our personal experience in those parties that we decided to form uh, this uh, or join this party together with our brothers and sisters who share our own principle and ideology. And uh, I'm happy that uh, people are beginning to recognize that uh, our party is the only way out for the country. Let me go back to a question that I asked you earlier on about blurring the lines. And the reason why I asked the question is there's so many problems that we're facing, whether it be ethnic, religious, and of course the politicians are at the center. Um, how do you intend, because you talked about your strategy is working, um, what strategy are you going to uh, use to deal with the divisions that we have in the country? Former President Lucia Gwampasinja recently spoke about the fact that these elections might just make or break us, and that it all depends on the rhetoric and the messaging that certain politicians are putting out, politicians like you. Um, so what do you intend to do to make sure that that is not you? Yes, you see, by the grace of God, we are going to have a very peaceful and successful election. And NNPP will win that election in 2023. Um, I told you from right from the beginning that all these supporters we have in this country were not doing it for nothing. It was based on the solid achievements that we had in Kano and elsewhere. Uh, as I told you, uh, I was governor of Kano 1999-2003, and of course 2011 to 2015. We have done extremely well, uh, especially at that particular time, our main issue in Kano then was the issue of education. We have performed uh, to the extent with due humility, no government in the history of this country did what we did in Kano because there was no government, state government, that sponsored over 3,000 young men and women of uh, Kano, not indigenous of Kano, residents of Kano, who have been given free scholarship to go and study various fields across 14 countries uh, of the world. Yeah. It was only our government, uh, really, at that time that established two major universities. Kano University of Science and Technology and Northwest University. It was our government in four years that established 26 institutes that had to do with training, retraining, and of course uh, 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 supporting our young men and women in various trades and uh, businesses. So um, we have done so well. It was only us that uh, sponsored thousands of students to private universities. We have done it in uh, Kalam University, uh, 412 uh, students or young men and women from Kano to that university, 300 to um, um, Ignidian University, 300 to Bells University, 200 to Crescent University, uh, 25 to Abti. These were people who came from Mr. Nobody. Uh, and uh, now they are graduates, some of them are doctors with PhDs, some of them are even professors. So we have done so much in education. It was only in Kano, I believe, that uh, every child of Kano during our time had opportunity to go to uh, primary school. All of them, not only to go and sit on the floor with a chair. It was only our time, during our time, that any child that graduated from primary school had an opportunity to go to secondary school because we established hundreds of them, including 44 technical schools and so on and so forth uh, in Kano. It was during our time that anybody with university uh, qualification that had admission either in this country or outside the country. And uh, we are so happy uh, 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 with that. And that's why when they say we have support from Kano, it's not just not for nothing. And we are able and happy to say the issue of security, the Boko Haram at that time did everything possible under the sun to take over Kano. But um, 
Uh, going by my experience from the Ministry of Defense, what we did was to bring in all the services, the military, of course, the uh, army, the air force in Kano, the police, the SSS, the civil defense, and all other people in uniform. Together with our own uh, security, the special services in Kano State, we brought them together under the Bulgarian commander. We gave them all what they required. And that's how we worked together with enough intelligence. And uh, we did uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, young men and women who are empowered. And along the line, of course, we included them in the issue of security. And uh, they got, our agencies at that time, security agencies, had no problem with intelligence. There is very much available to them. And that's why up till today, it is very difficult for anybody, any criminal, uh, any terrorist to reach Kano easily. It's not, it's not possible. I'm curious, if you were able to do that in Kano, why is it something that we cannot replicate across the states in the areas that are mostly affected by either Boko Haram or the um, so-called gunmen or the bandits? I mean, we see how stretched, thinly stretched our security forces are right now, including the police. Um, and this is one of the biggest problems that this administration has faced, especially for a government who rode into office on the wings of that. So why do you think the problem, or where do you think the problem is? Because you've spoken about what you were able to do in Kano, and that still stands as we speak. But why can't it be replicated across the country? Well, um, that's, as federal government, that's what we intend to do. But if you are look, uh, talking of governors, you see, unfortunately, from my experience from 1999 to date, uh, most people who are opportuned uh, to be governors, they want to stand on themselves to think that they know everything. They hardly learn from any other person. You see, in 1999 to 2003, I was governor of Kano. We have done so well. I lost the election because of some obvious reasons in 2003, not because of performance or credibility or anything, no. Because of the sentiments of that time, General Buhari came at that time, everybody was shouting, say Buhari, uh, we were in the PDP together with uh, uh, Obasanjo. We stood by Obasanjo and uh, we worked so hard. That's the only time you put, uh, they put gubernatorial and presidential election same day. And along the confusion, result was announced, I lost the election. Now, that was the first, the first time we stood uh, by the party. Now, but when I came back eight years after, the first place of call was this Lagos, to come to Fashola and say, how are you doing this, how are you doing that, to learn more. Not because I didn't know. When I was governor, Fashola was here, certainly uh, was not a governor. Uh, it was during the uh, Bola Tunubu. Uh, that's what, what we started together. So people should learn. People should compare. People should listen. There are so much to learn in this country. Many of us who are in government house uh, 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 for a very long time, those of us who started, especially those of us who have started in 1999, well, nobody. In fact, um, the general thing is, I am now the governor. It is the seat, and nobody listens to other people. So we were ready. In fact, even at that time, there were many things that we were doing in Kano that I tried to share with the northern governors. That's during my second term. But most people were not even willing to, to do. But the point now is that um, I think you are right. And that's why we're in the race. What we have done in Kano, what I have done in the Ministry of Defense uh, at that particular time, because I'm sure Nigerians will remember, during our time, it was extremely difficult for anybody to uh, raise uh, his head against Nigerians. It was very difficult. In fact, we were out there. there. Our military was in Liberia. Our military was in Sierra Leone, the military uh, were in Darfur, in Sudan, and so on and so forth. And they did extremely well. Now things have gone, uh, many things have gone wrong to the extent that we are not even talking of going out for operation anywhere. 
even to protect ourselves is becoming extremely difficult now. And uh, we have seen the issues, we have known the issues, and uh, um, it's well documented uh, in our party. And very soon we are coming up or coming out with the details of what we will do in the areas of uh, security, in the areas of economy, in the areas of education. Uh, we want to do it differently because that is what is needed today. You know, the general thing, I mean, everybody will talk, I will do this. Or that. But we'll come out with the details in our blueprint. Since we're talking about different aspects of the uh, country, let's talk about the oil situation, the oil theft. The presidential candidate of the Social Democratic Party, um, Prince Adebayo, uh, had mentioned the fact that government was complicit in the level of oil thefts that we've been experiencing recently. And I'm sure that you have heard that there's been a, a pipeline that is stretching to the sea. The government just discovered um, where our oil is being funneled into the hands of you know, thieves. Um, why do you think that this is happening right under a president who is the minister for petroleum? And of course, an NNPC that has been rebranded over and over again, but change has not necessarily taken place. What do you think about that situation surrounding? Now, um, in my own opinion, in the first place, uh, president ordinarily shouldn't be the minister of uh, petroleum. But in this case, he is. Uh, unfortunately, he is. Um, and uh, you see, uh, NNPC is just like all other ministries, departments, and agencies. Things have gone wrong. The problem we had now, or we have on the ground, is that uh, um, president, under normal circumstance, should surround himself with very competent people. All areas, all these places are being manned by somebody. And for the minister or the group managing director and even the security agencies that are responsible for ensuring the safety of our uh, infrastructure, especially the pipes you are talking about, under normal circumstances, this is the time for many of them to resign. You see, you cannot be going around collecting money in terms of debt from outside loans, while at the same time, your own assets are being taken away day and night by criminals. It doesn't tell you. And uh, you see, I am one of those who hate the issue of loan. Mm -hmm. For the eight years I was governor, I never borrowed one naira. And twice I was going to government house in 1999 and 2011. I was inheriting huge debts from my predecessors. But there was never a time in those two places that I left one naira as debt, I would pay them and exit, leaving zero debt. And that is how it should be. And that's why we always tell Nigerians and everybody who cares to know that there is enough resources in this country to take care of ourselves. And we have proved it in Kano on two different occasions, 99 to 2003, and the 80 years in between. When I was living in 2003, no, zero. When I came back, hundreds of millions of US dollars were being borrowed. The first thing I did was to exit from those loans and paid off. I left Kano in 2015, with zero debt. So, you see, everybody wants to be governor. In fact, even everybody wants to be president. But the problem is how many people have got the capacity and how many people have proved to the country and the world that they have the capacity to do the work of the president. Some of them just want to be there because they want it. Some may think it's a place to enjoy. Some will think it's a place to uh, amass some uh, resources. 
and so on and so forth. It doesn't work that way. I am personally in, 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 in politics to make the difference. I was in the civil service of Kano for 17 years before I left service because I started very early after my technical education in Kano. I joined RECA and served for 17 years as a civil servant before retiring from the civil service in 1991 and I became deputy speaker in 1992 of the House of Reps. So, um, you see, that is why Nigerians this time around, this 2023 election, they have to be very, very careful. They have to put aside the issue of sentiments, that this one is from my ethnic group. This one, we go to mosque or the church together. This one is from the north, this one is from the south. What we are advocating is that people should put their antecedents on the ground. We want people with capacity to do the job. We want people with integrity, people who would come and say, yes, you are doing wrong. You should be punished. You cannot say one should be punished while you have done 10 times, 20 times worse than that particular person. So um, I believe now that a uh, campaign has started. Uh, so many things are likely going uh, to come out. And that is why I believe strongly that the other parties will only come down with time. They can ask nothing they will do to impress Nigerians. Because if there was anything, I am in the position to know because I was part of the formation of the PDP in 1998, 99, I became governor of Kano State. I was part of the formation of APC in 2013, 14. And uh, of course, 2014, I was a governor, I left the party uh, PDP then, because we thought PDP was the worst. We wanted change for the country. Unfortunately, we realized later that uh, some were even arguing that PDP itself was better than the uh, APC. And uh, they are wire banking before uh, NNPP really was populated. They thought uh, they would defeat APC because they were bad but APC was worst. Mm -hmm. But now the equation is completely different and Nigerians are coming out uh, really because everybody is worried. Everybody in this country is negatively affected except few, very, very few people who are there pretending that all is well. While, as you rightly pointed out, we all know that uh, things have gone so bad and the worst thing is they don't even want to hear that. If you go and say things are bad, say, oh, this one is an enemy. Let's, let's talk about um, what um, pundits, political pundits have been saying about 2023. Most of them, if not 70%, have said Nigeria needs a unifier. Um, now, let's also talk about the economists. They are saying that even if it were God himself that would be the president in 2023, it's not going to be an easy fit. How ready are you for that? Now, you see, uh, for those of us who have been in the civil service, those of us who have been in politics at least for three good decades now, those of us who had opportunities to look at what was happening and what is happening in other parts of the world. You see, Nigeria and Nigerians are good. Nigerians are good people. The elasticity limit of Nigeria. Do we keep stretching Nigerians until we? we yeah, we yeah. Break? I mean, I mean, if uh, Nigeria was another country, uh, would have reached the elasticity limit a long time ago, but we are still here as Nigerians. We are still moving as Nigerians, and now the only hope that Nigerians have is that there will be election in the next few months, and believing that uh, uh, some people will come and change the status quo. The status quo is not working for Nigerians. It's only working for very few people in this country. And that is why people have hope, especially the young men and women, people who could not go to school, people who have finished their degrees, diplomas, NC and so on, cannot find a job anywhere because government could not make the conducive atmosphere necessary for them to employ more people 
and even more importantly, to create better environment for uh, uh, um, businessmen and women to employ more of these young men and women in this country. So uh, it's very unfortunate uh, to the extent that uh, young men and women are taking drugs now. Uh, those of us who are going into crowds, those of us who are in direct contact with these young men on the streets, is very pathetic. You look at them, look at their eyes, look at their lips, look at their palms. You could see these guys are not well, are taking drugs. You can see it in their eyes. They can see it even in their behavior and so on and so forth. And nobody is doing anything about it. Look, in Kano, for the eight years I was governor, we established what we call a reformatory institute. All the young men and women who are into drugs who are being mocked, put in the reformatory, stay there for three months uh, with psychologists, with, uh, with uh, uh, Kraigi, or Islamic uh, malams and so on, talking to them uh, with uh, other doctors, medical doctors, taking care of the health aspect uh, of them, and so on and so forth. And all of them, without exception, were employed directly by government or indirectly by way of taking them to in, uh, ITF for special training in their chosen career and then giving them free uh, capital to go and do their businesses. And they're all there in Kano. And we dealt with the barrels that were bringing in the drugs into the country. We even went to the extent of the source outside this country to talk to them and warn them and report it to federal government and so on and so forth. So we have done so much. And that is why you see these young men and women you see on the streets of Kano, northern Nigeria, or even in the south. Anybody you see dancing, pressing, conquasia, has one reason or the other to do that. And if you ask them, they will tell you why they are so happy with what we have done and what they are expecting us to do uh, when we have the opportunity again. Well, always a pleasure to speak with you. But finally, the candidates that you are competing against, the APC, Labour Party, The Economist recently wrote about um, Peter Albi saying that he is touted to win this election by all of their statistics and the yardsticks they used in measuring all of the candidates. Lastly, what do you think about the Peter Albi phenomenon? Are you worried in any way? You see, we operate at the grassroots. That's where we are. Anybody who is disguised can stay there as long as he can. Are you saying that Peter Albi is in I'm not saying that. What I'm saying, I'm in being general, but uh, you can fix it anywhere. You see, I think people have to be careful on what they see. And especially things that look obvious, that is not true. Now, parties are in the businesses, for example, of making fake uh, opinion poll. That's, that's no good for anybody. The Economist is a very famous no, and no, renowned no, no. Yes. Yes. They wrote, I want you to read it very well, what they said. They are not recommending anybody. They are not pressing anybody. They just, uh, you see, some of this um, propaganda doesn't work. It doesn't work. I think at the end, that's why I told you, the, the other parties have read their pick. All the people who are propagandists, people telling lies, people sort of, uh, stories that are true. You see, only facts and truth can stand the test of time. Okay. What we ask Nigerians to do is to look at the real antecedents of these candidates. You tell us what you have done. And uh, of course, debate will come. Uh, people will tell us. And of course, we know all the states, these 36 states of the Federation, we know them. We some of them are our colleagues. In fact, we are some of them are our junior colleagues. We know those who have performed. We know those who have done nothing and they are keeping quiet. And we know those who have done nothing and are making empty uh, statements that uh, does not stand the test of time. Well, we're, we're looking forward to 2023 because it's going to be a very interesting year.
Thank you very much, Mary. Senator Rabi Musa Kwankoso is the presidential candidate of the New Nigerian People's Party, NNPP. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right.